Hello people, and welcome back to part 25 of Ilos, our modded city skylines build. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. And thank you so much for all the love and support on our little sort of subscriber homage build to the governor last week. Uh, very much enjoyed the construction of the governor's office, including the wonderful little sunken park that we have outside of it now. Of course, in honour of Karina, our wonderful subscriber. So, thank you for all the support. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. However, this week we are going to take a break from the downtown project. It's been over here for a while now. And it's starting to establish itself. I'm very happy with how the downtown is coming on. However, today we're going to head back to the start of the city. Because we need to sort this out. This is what's happening. <laughs> this is absolutely horrific. This is not nice at all. So this has just been the absolute service dumping ground. Every time the mile grid needed electricity or sewage or garbage collection it was just thrown down here and this needs to be fixed now <laughs> so what we are going to do today is use Avania's modular sewage and modular recycling packs off of the workshop both of those will be linked down below today to construct um, the kind of proper garbage processing and water treatment plant that can help serve the mile grid and we'll probably end up doing something similar like this build, perhaps over the other side of the city, to help keep everything served over here. But some nice ideas in store today, and some really fun custom assets from Avania. Let's build Ilus's water treatment and garbage processing facility, shall we? Okay, so everything is gone. Let's start building. So because we're working with an industrial area today, I'm feeling that vanilla industrial road is going to be more than appropriate in order to sort of by this area together. So we're bringing the industrial road up until the rail line here, which the, the train police did tell me off for this. I do need to amend this today. Apparently this is way too sharp for a train. So I'll change it. <laughs> the uh, train police were not happy with me about that one. But either way, we're going to use a bunch of these assets today from Avania, some really nice ones, including the water treatment stuff as well. Alongside mixing in uh, some of the vanilla assets like the Sunset Harbour stuff and some of the vanilla uh, water treatment stuff as well. Okay, but I really want to factor the train line into today's build too. So I'm going to start out actually by placing in the waste processing complex from Sunset Harbour, weirdly enough. Because this is very much um, an aesthetic that we want against the train line. And we'll worry about road connections in a second here. But this is really going to help me judge the scale of the build, okay? So I'm happy with that for right now. Nice drive-by with the fencing. And also, as we get cargo trains passing through here as well, this is going to be very much an appreciated aesthetic. Okay, fantastic. Let's now work on the entrance and setting up something of an initial road frame, and we'll start out with some garbage processing. So I was coming to a toll booth. I'm going to grab a two-way large bit, a little bit of road anarchy here uh, to allow the connection. Let's bring this in. And let's go for about there. I think that's going to be good. I'm going to switch back into industrial road. And no road guideline here because there's plenty of road guidelines that can throw us. And that's going to be good for me. Let's create ourselves a little roundabout so we can start distributing some traffic around the area. Right, we'll go for a classic five deep one. It's always a nice sensible size, isn't it? And we've got some really nice sort of industrial themed uh, intersection markings planned today as well, which should be quite fun. So I do want to also move between the uh, four lane US medium road with the yellow median because I think this is quite industrial as well. And um, I think it certainly has a place within the build, doesn't it? Okay, so let's see how much we want to bring this up by. Let's go for 12 units. I think that's going to be quite nice. And then I want to set up a little sort of industrial one-way flow system now. So let's come back onto a road guideline temporarily. And then we're going to come out by five units here. Maybe six, actually. Okay, and then we're going to draw these up. Do the same thing over here. Six units to the edge of the grid. And then draw them up like so. And then we can delete two of these sections here. And then let's do a little bit of uh, network multi-tool. We'll come into a uh, create connection mode. And this is going to give us uh, some really nice curves that we can play with in the area. Do the same thing over this side too. Let's select our nodes. You will notice this looks absolutely horrendous. All we need to do to fix this is grab a little bit and move it. And then just grab one of these segments and just switch them out a little bit. And it'll take away the tearing. A little bit of node controller within the middle to help square everyone off. And then you can decide on your own perfect offsets here as well. And what I'm thinking for intersection marking tool action, because we've got some nice props today. Let's come in and mark up the intersection. 
And I actually want to hold control so we can drag the points a little bit closer here because we want the filler to be flush. So I'm going to draw this one down into the middle. Same again on this side and then top to bottom. And then let's create ourselves a filler. Join all these points together. And then we want to change this to a solid uh, pavement. There we go. Okay. I think I'm going to be happy with that. Nice little concrete filler. We can come into our props and search for bollards uh, where we can find ourselves a little bollard. There's also some other industrial props used around here today. But I think just a little bit of bollard spice for lack of a better phrase. Between some of our insertion markings today, alongside some of the yellow paint and the industrial themed roads with the little bollards can really help bring a little more personality into our road network frames today. So we'll definitely be doing some more of this. Of course, let's change our directions around so it's flowing as the way we want it to. That should be absolutely fine. And we'll want to do a little bit of traffic manager too, just to uh, ban. It looks like they are already banned, aren't they? Yes, they can't carry on here, just straight ahead. So they won't turn over the filler. That's going to be absolutely fine. So we've got our waste processing complex in here. This is going to be the sort of vanilla side of things. And I very much want to use a Vanya's workshop assets to construct the recycling center that's going to sit opposite the main sort of entrance road into town here. So I think we're going to start out by actually drawing in this road frame, give ourselves sort of a base layer to work with first, and then we can have a chat about how these assets are going to fit in. So I'm just going to place every single one of them along the road, and then we can pick whichever ones we want and start to construct a little bit of a waste uh, recycling facility. So this is Avania's Modular Recycling, um, just a wonderful collection. And if you haven't checked out Avania's collections on the workshop, um, they're a massive improvement to some of your base service assets. Uh, re really wonderful work. So we've got a whole bunch of different vibes to play with today. Uh, let's start piecing these together. So the main building is the Recycling Sorting Centre. This is very much going to be sort of the, the meat and potatoes, isn't it? And uh, it looks like there's a nice little opportunity. We are within a noise pollution radius, but... We can use trees and whatnot to hide that. It should be okay from there. Okay, I think having the main building positioned against the main road here is going to be something that we can all learn to appreciate. And now, a lot of these buildings have these sort of little pipes on them, almost like little transfer tubes or tunnels between the different assets, and I really want to use these with the one-unit industrial roads today in order to try and make them work a little bit. So let's go ahead now and grab our next unit, which is going to be the Glass MRF. Not entirely sure what MRF actually stands for. If uh, perhaps there's some recycling nerds in the comments, they can let us know. Okay, so now I just want to start uh, finagling these pieces together with a little bit of control while we're using Move It, and then just start to position them so it looks like the buildings are all interlinked. And then the spaces where we do have space, and um, this is where a little bit of one unit industrial road is going to be absolutely more than welcome. Squeeze these between. Of course, these are from the Vanilla Plus packs, if you don't have them, the Vanilla Plus roads. Right? But, what a wonderful little detailed industrial area we're having now, just by considering the placement of these assets. The little bollards on the road. It's all very appreciated, isn't it? Okay, but I'm happy with this so far. Let's come back now and find another asset that we like. How about the ones with these little diggers in here? I do like the look of this one. So let's bring it over. We can see that its connection is on the front of it here, so we're going to want to have to factor that in. Now, let's see where we can possibly squeeze it. Let's bring it against this road here. We will pick a, our one unit industrial road again, this time with the road length on. And it looks like we can just about box in behind here. Yes, we can. Bring this down. All right. Very nice. I'm going to be happy with that, I think. Let's come over now and we'll find another unit that we like the look of. How about we just use sort of a scrapyard looking one, haven't we? So we'll save that one for later. Uh, there's another tower one here. Why don't we go for this little one with the silo on it? Let's see what we can do with this. So now, now I want to start bringing in some new sort of industrial road frames, if you like. And uh, we'll do some nice node control things here too. So let's bring it around the back of the main building. And then we will come into node controller. I want to hide all the crossings really. I don't really want them here. And then let's just start offsetting everyone. And then I want to start rotating or shifting green. I also want to offset blue whilst we shift green. There we go. Just so it's all within the same node. And then we don't want to do a master offset. Just want to offset blue. 
offset green a touch more. There we go. So that just opens out that junction into a single node now, rather than having to use two nodes very close to each other. Okay. And again, there's little intersection marking nuances that we can bring into this space here today as well. So, of course, a little bit of service painter in between all these areas is really going to help, but we can do a lot of that during our D-time time-lapse. Let's grab our next asset now. Let's see where we want this to sit. So his connection is sort of forward-facing here, I think, isn't it? Yes, it is. That is absolutely where it's facing. So let's bring it around this side, and maybe we can uh, finagle this into the back of the main building again. And there we go. That's going to fit quite nicely, isn't it? Starting to create some open courtyard vibes as well. Ignore all the random cars. This is from the deletion of everything we deleted. <laughs> There's a reason all these people are here. Uh, the, the city currently has now zero garbage and sewage processing, so if we let the game play, ILOS will quite literally shit itself. Okay, let's come back over to our new assets now. Let's see what we want to play with. Uh, how about these sort of courtyard-looking ones with the forklift trucks on them? These look quite nice. Bring this one over. So again, its connection is going to be facing this side, I believe. Yes, it is. That's absolutely fine. I think I'm going to have it exposed to this corner, though. I do like those little forklift trucks. And why don't we save a little sort of alley of space between the two buildings sometimes? Not everything has to be vastly interconnected, right? Okay, so now we're approaching the edge of the roundabout. Let's bring in uh, something of an entrance road. And then we'll also bring up this connection here, too. There we go. So start to envelop our sort of recycling centre unit now. Head back over and see what else we can find. Let's grab this one now. This one's got some little sort of stacks on it. And its connection is facing here. Is that correct? Yes, it is indeed. Wonderful. So, let's carry on upgrading some of our road frames now. And let's start bringing this around as hopefully a completed loop. And then we can decide exactly how everything's going to squeeze in around this. Just to about there. Again, creating some more of these little interconnected tunnels between the two buildings. Really wonderful assets. It's a shame that the the base game stuff isn't as modular as this. Okay, and then let's grab this one as well. So each of these buildings is just providing a garbage processing value to the city. If you have a look at them, you can sort of see, you know, the aluminium MRF is going to be processing 40,000 units a week, which compared to a vanilla asset is just nearly double the recycling center. So very useful and very good looking assets as well. Again, all in below, if you'd like to come and play with them yourself. Okay, so let's have a look where he wants to sit. It's like he's going to be disconnected here, but we can actually afford now perhaps another connection into this space as well. Yeah, let's get those buildings linked together with the pipes, tubes, tunnels, not entirely sure what the terminology for these is. Okay, but it's already coming together, isn't it? We've only got two assets left to use now. Uh, there's another scrapyard looking one here. So we'll see where we can squeeze this in. Looks like there could be a possible space for it here, maybe. No, but there will be. That We'll create space for it. There we go. So let's have this right up on the corner. And then if I want to use these ones elsewhere, they're a little bit of a clash. Um, these sort of like sludge tanks, I think they're called. We have a little look. Yeah, sludge biogas facility. We'll use that one elsewhere in the build. But I think for right now, okay, just the, the careful placement and consideration of a lot of these Avanya recycling assets makes a world of difference to our garbage processing facilities in the city, doesn't it? In modded cities. What a wonderful little sort of addition that is to... Especially the main road drive as well, right? Yes, please. Very nice indeed. Okay, so let's go ahead now and trim off all the existing frames that we've drawn in. And uh, we'll also keep... I think we might keep the, the full road... As one, no, we'll, we'll go everything one unit. It looks weird if it's not all one unit, I guess. Okay, and then that can now envelop our build. I might even just trim back a little bit of the road network around this side, just so it totally wraps up the buildings. And then, of course, coming our detail and time lapse, lots of little service painter and industrial themed props in around this space. So we're going to help bring it to life that little bit more, right? Okay, so now I'm going to remove any sort of frames that we're not a fan of. I think now I'm kind of seeing this thing configured, I would actually like it to be slightly further over to the left, which thanks to the wonderful world of Move It, we can now just select everything. I'm going to hold Alt while I do this, so I'll stay on the same axis. Let's bring this up to about here, I think. 
yeah, I just want to expose the view to the waste complex, waste processing facility complex over there as well. And that's going to give us a nice border on the entrance into the industrial area as well. Very happy with that. So that's absolutely wonderful. Let's go ahead and get that hooked back into the network. We're going to bring this down. And then I think we'll upgrade this road here. Let's finagle our building across a little bit. So now let's come to the other side. What I'd like to do here now is include a little bit of the vanilla processing uh, that we've seen over here alongside a cargo station over here as well. Alongside possibly the inclusion of a unique factory. Now, eyeing up some of the other ones, I do think that the soft paper is going to be the most appropriate for a facility like this because it already has some slight water treatment vibes to it thanks to these little clarifiers, purifier things, whatever they're called. Um, on the side, alongside some of the little you know, tunnel, skywalk action thing as well. But I'm not entirely sold on the soft paper factory, so I'm just going to leave it in for right now. See how it feels. I often find that's a helpful thing to do, you know. If you're placed in an asset and you're a bit like, mm, I'm not I'm not quite sure, giving it a bit of time to settle into the build can really help. So I'll just move you over. You will be considered at a later date. But yes, back to the original point here of including some uh, vanilla processing. So I think I want another waste processing punt and I want to start spinning some orientations now on some angles if at all possible and uh, let's line up this second recycling center here with the fencing on the first so of course this is going to double our garbage outlet or processing capacity anyway but I think having two of the repeated asset if it was on the same angle it would look too repeated but I think now we've just rotated it by 90 degrees it helps break up a lot of the shapes and the patterns that come with it. And of course, I think the drive-by now alongside this rail line is going to become very industrial thanks to the presence of these two buildings. So let's go ahead and trim up our road networks now. Let's bring this one down this way. Just connect in. Again, we'll do some nicer sort of road uh, refinements in this case as well. And then again, another little connection through here. So it's my understanding the vanilla assets, they do produce goods, don't they? Uh, let's just have a little double check here. So it will collect from transfer facilities and landfill sites for further processing into energy and recycled materials. So they are going to be producing goods. Uh, so that's a good sign to include a warehouse if indeed you have one that you fancy. I'm thinking I think maybe the, the small one is probably too big, too small rather. So I think we'll go with a little bit of medium warehouse if we like. And again, the orientation of the medium warehouse is going to be dramatically important to the build. Let's just spin it around and see what we think of the other side. I do like the exposed forecourt being having it exposed toward the, um, the tall booth there. That is quite nice. <laughs> I do like that. This is a tricky orientation. But no, I think I'm going to go for the other one. Okay, so we'll get this to store. Uh, commercial zone goods, it's going to be absolutely fine for us for right now. So that will help to store a lot of the processing that is dumped out by these two guys. Alright. So also over this side of the complex, I would like to have a train station. Let's go ahead and grab the cargo train terminal. We are going to use network multi-tools unlock network function to switch out the rail that is inside this. We are going to go for our North American rail, which... Uh, Tim the Terrible uh, did put back on the workshop, so the disaster from last episode uh, has now been fixed. So let's decide on the placement of the cargo freight terminal here. Would be nice if we could align it so it really flushes in with the um, soft paper factory as well. Okay, very much becomes part of the factory, doesn't it, then, if we have the cargo terminal uh, positioned within that space. Then I'm hoping now with a touch of uh, anarchy and indeed road bending off. Yeah, we shouldn't get too much weird tearing here, I don't think. We should be okay. For the most part, any inconsistencies can be amended with move it. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, so that's going to allow uh, cargo in and out of the city. And also in an area that's producing uh, commercial zone goods too, so we should be... Uh, okay for sort of cargo traffic around here. 
I might also bring off some rail maintenance yards. We do see these uh, really often in Phoenix, but we'll see. So I'm quite tempted here to do the vanilla trick of leaving the cars to come uh, directly in and out of the station. But we're just going to leave it there for right now. Okay, we're going to see what happens with this area. It's very much like a soft paper factory. We're just going to wait and see as to how it all settles in. So next up, I'd like to have a look at some car parking, for which I think we're going to continue to use the parking lot roads to help save nodes. I did have a comment last episode, uh, someone asking what happens when we hit the node count. And um, for those that don't know, if you hit the node count and um, the, the city ends, that is it for Ilos. So we can't build any more nodes, which means no more roads, no more fences. Anything that uses a node can't be placed. So yeah, that's what happens if we hit the node count. The city will die. <laughs> just, to, just to clarify that. So I am trying to be careful with it. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on with some poorly maintained service roads. Very much a fan of having these in uh, alongside the build, I think. So let's go for road guideline. And then we'll go for some of our uh, 40 meter poorly maintained friends. We'll do a little stretch of 11. Perhaps even 12, maybe. Would be appropriate. Yeah, let's go for 12. And then we'll leave a tile in between every single time. This should give us a nice consistent car parking pattern. There we go, four should be absolutely plenty. So we got some parking for all the water treatment and recycling workers now. This is excellent news. Let's re-measure the distance here, see we're at a distance of 109. Let's make sure we repeat that on the last side before coming out. Let's drag our road. And then we can have this connect in uh, with a road guideline snap note. So we are at level. Fantastic. And then we can grab this in, and that's going to be fine. Again, lots of little bits of service painter in between these spaces here. Could even take it a little bit sort of sandy if we want. I think I will, because this is going to be such a heavy concrete build. Maybe we'll just introduce perhaps a little bit of sand detail in between at the car parking spaces. Okay, I'm actually starting to prefer these parking lot roads over big parking lots now. They're a lot simpler. Okay, but nice big car parking pattern out front. That's really going to open up the entire facility for development, I think, isn't it? Going to bring it a lot more importance. Wonderful. So let's now start discussing the wonderful world of water treatment, which isn't something I thought we would say. So I'm just going to place all of them again on a road. Every time we get one of these modular parks, it's always a good idea just to visualize um, exactly what you've got first. And there's only a few of them here. But with the water sewage treatment plants, there's a few sort of aesthetic things we want to respect. Lots of repeated uh, clarifiers and indeed aeration basins alongside activated sludge processing tanks as well. And again, similar to sort of other or of Vanya's uh, recycling stuff, um, each of these will hold a, a sewage capacity for the city. So very exciting indeed. Now there's a few of these assets themselves that actually look like main buildings. It's kind of these three here, right? Before you actually get into the uh, process in itself. Okay, so let's go for this one here. This is quite big and important, isn't it? Let's bring him over. Let's come and say hello. So if we can position it, so all this industrial fencing that comes with the asset is appropriately positioned, we might be able to generate some very strong sort of main building vibes here, okay? That's going to be good for me. Let's go ahead and grab another one. Now let's go for, see which one's next. We've got a pumping service or a grit and screen facility. Grit and screen sounds quite interesting, doesn't it? So let's bring this one over here. So, looks like we can actually just about keep it connected at the right spot. It's a very small, sweet spot though. There. <laughs> that very specific spot. Um, I'm thinking maybe we can double up these assets here. It looks like they've got some finagleable power. If we twist them around and into each other, does it give us the vibe that we're after, I think? We're definitely going to want to have to bob the trees off, though, which is fine because they're only vanilla trees anyway. So we'll get rid of those. It's not like we need them, right? 
So your R class is disconnected. That's fine. Your connection will be where the gate is then, won't it? Yes, yeah, there. I think I do prefer this orientation though, uh, purely because the fencing is on this side. I want to make sure to not block that little cargo entrance there. Okay. Yeah, ever so slightly blocking a window, but I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. I'm on board with that. I think that's going to frame our sort of main medium road uh, through the area quite nicely, isn't it? I think it is. Let's go back into our industrial stuff now. Let's go ahead and complete this one-way system. So we will bring everyone up to the road guideline of the car park. Everyone come in here. We will also create rail crossings too. Should be vast amounts of sort of consistent traffic in this area, so we should be okay with rail crossings. Okay, so now the next sort of key aesthetic of my water treatment plant is the repeated pattern of the aeration basins, because these are pretty much part of every sewage plant ever, right? You always see these. Okay, so let's discuss the pattern. If we're going to go for right here, and then we can draw out a one unit road to see that it's a depth of eight units, this now gives us a quite easy repeatable pattern of these basins together. But let's have a little look how well they sort of sync with each other. If we were to bring them right in, does that give us the pattern we want? I think it does, doesn't it? Yes, let's go for that then. Let's double up these. So I'm just using move its control function to very carefully align uh, the processing buildings here. I think we'll go for one more row. And that's going to be perfect. Let's see what we think of that. This screams sewage works to me, right? This is what everyone what everyone thinks when they think of like a classic sewage works. This is very much the vibe that we get, isn't it? Okay, let's bring the road network frame um, a touch closer now. Not like that, though. Let's actually come off of road length here so we can manually eye it up ourselves. There we go. Yes, please. And then around the back, and everyone is okay. Cool. So we'll get all these hooked in, of course, and we'll start to see everything come into place once we've got in our final few assets. So we've now got the clarifier. Okay, let's bring this over. And again, you often see these uh, repeated in big batches on the sewage plants, okay? So again, it's something I'm going to want to measure. Let's come ahead and reposition the clarifier to sit against this road. And then if we're going to continue to drop these in, let's go for one, possibly a fourth. Is that going to encroach upon the rail line? It very possibly might. So if we just leave it a little bit of breathing room, is that going to make it slightly more acceptable? I think it is. Okay, and then let's draw in uh, another road uh, behind now temporarily. And then if we just grab these five clarifiers and give them a little spin around, uh, we should be able to create a nicely repeated pattern of these. And again, a little bit of control with Move It is going to help us stay perfectly aligned. So really easy to generate these heavy sewage work vibes. And there is a ton of sewage processing here as all well. ILOS will not need sewage processing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> There's an absolute ton of it here today, but that's fine. So next we've got the uh, activated sludge processing tank, which doesn't that just sound wonderful? Uh, let's go ahead and bring this over here. I actually do want to bring in some of the vanilla uh, assets though first, like the eco inland stuff, because some of these are actually quite important, and definitely the, um, the natural disasters gear today as well with the water reservoirs. Certainly bring those in. And possibly pumping service action too. Yeah. We could almost use this as some sort of admin site for the, the basins here, right? This is the main building where sort of all shits are go to be processed, basically. There's literally no other way to say that. It's, it's what we're building today, isn't it? Okay. Turns out that we can polish a turd, everyone. Okay. Yes, happy with that there. That's going to be good for me. Ilos has run out of money. <laughs> so I'm going to need to let the game play because this has been a massively expensive build. Um, yeah, so I'll go get everything hooked in and then we can actually see this facility come to life. We'll let the game play and see what we think of it. So we'll be right back. So having just let the game play for a little bit, we actually did remove some power stations from here as well. So I think what we are going to do 
is do a little sort of solar field uh, in and around as part of this building. So we're going to grab our solar panels that we've been using, of course, within our system. And then why don't we see if we can place them uh, perhaps within the facility over this side. Okay, so we'll create a few rows of them and then we can just use move it now to uh, copy and paste a couple of batches in if we like. And this should hopefully uh, take care of ILOS's power demand. And that should disperse the power across the places that are missing it. Yes, there we go. That's absolutely wonderful. So it's flowing now at least, which is good. And we can see that all of our new garbage collection vehicles are now heading out across the city. And yes, this is what I wanted. So they're going to be using the high speed uh, diagonal road through the mark grid to go and collect garbage. That's really good. We don't really want them using the uh, mar grid frames because it's just going to be more traffic if they're going to be using the high speed roads that is very good news indeed for us so very happy with that cool fantastic things are coming along so we've got one more building here uh, which is the water pumping service this one again is part of the uh, water treatment from vanya's park let's see if we can bring this over and it looks like it's going to fit perfectly in there isn't it can we refuse that you know, if it fits, we sit, don't we? That's the that's the rule. And I think that's going to be quite a nice complement into the existing water treatment stuff over here as well. Which we can check now. Yes, we have enormous amounts of water treatment. ILOS will not need any of these for a little bit. If you're wondering why I'm not hooking them in, it's because we're playing with the no water pipes mod in order to save the nodes. But you still need to draw out a bit of pipe so they become connected. So that's absolutely fine. Wonderful. So next up now, uh, I would like to just basically duplicate the water tower areas here and try and create a little bit of sort of point of admin for them uh, if that's at all possible so i'm thinking we're going to come out here i might actually go down into a dirt road for this actually yeah let's go for a dirt road let's go for a one unit dirt now i'll bring these out and then we'll do some stuff with chain link fencing and props in order to bring this area to life a little bit more and then they are pretty loud assets aren't they so let's go for one here Sort of bring these in a repeated pattern. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring in uh, some water pipes into them. And this should massively satisfy Alos's water demand as well. Yes, there we go. Enormous amounts available now. So that's really going to help the build uh, settle in a little bit more, isn't it? Okay. Let's so also have a look at our garbage processing too. Yes, well in the green. This is all satisfied Alos's services demands. This is fantastic news. So I think now I'd just like to possibly discuss the placement of some more industrial assets and then we can have a look at a detailing time that's for today as well. So let's bring in some uh, further interconnecting roads now. And then we're going to grab uh, some small warehouses. Because these are actually very good decoration assets because they actually fill up once you've specified a resource for them. Um, it kind of just adds into the sort of freight industrial vibe once these are filled. And then we're going to get this to store commercial zone goods again. Would also like to grab both of them perhaps and just bring them a little closer towards the rail. Just so we've got that fence in kind of set up against the network. Okay, It's a very small adjustment in orientation but I hope you can all agree it's one that does actually make a difference. Yeah, so that's great. All these will store commercial goods. If we do end up opening an industrial area around here uh, later on in the series, then we can always come back and change these storage things. But our waste processing complexes are producing goods, so we might as well have that over here as well. And then I definitely think a little bit of vanilla commercial is going to be really appreciated. Uh, to sort of embellish the sort of main entrance vibes, I think, isn't it? A little bit of admin, if you like. And then there's plenty of other little sort of nuances of industry and detail that we can place around here in order to get everything fixed in but it's coming together a ton of chain link fencing is going to be really helpful especially along these main roads and also into this metro station as well bring a little pathway so workers can come and enter here if they need to be okay so the last thing i want to have a look at before we do a detail and time lapse is some little slip systems for the road here so it's coming to our highways i want to grab just the one lane roads and then let's go for here let's go for 14 units that seems like a good happy measurement doesn't it let's flip these around so we will need to do some traffic manager work here because otherwise the ai will come out here and then turn left and actually read it 
as a faster option, which is not what we want them to do. So only straight ahead here. Do not turn. There we go. He's just lost his mind. <laughs> he just went straight to the bridge. Oh no, that's not good, is it? Okay, yeah. So we've fixed that one now. You can only turn uh, straight ahead here. And then you can only enter here as well. No left turn. Only turn right. And then it should be a pretty similar story for this one over here as well. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Cool. And again... There's little bits of uh, intersection marking action and indeed some node controller uh, spice that we can get involved with here as well. Uh, during our detailing time lapse to help bring a little more sort of industrial importance into this area. Okay, but just slightly, slightly sort of increasing speed uh, for people wanting to get on and off of the diagonal arterial. Yes, there we go. So he's going back to the, the complex now. Yes, he is. Very, very happy to see that the fact that the garbage process trucks are choosing to use the high speed out here will into the mile grid. That's, uh, that's very satisfying. Huge fan of that. Fantastic. Oh, wonderful. We're getting a freight train in now as well. It should be a very appreciated aesthetic, shouldn't it? There we go. Yes, please. We'll see if we can get a little sample spice of what this looks like here now. Yeah, I think including the rail line has added a very sort of industrial vibe into it, hasn't it? Very much happy with that. And I think it's quite a nice sort of abrupt end back into the desert as well. From this mass industry. And especially how distant does the skyline look too? It looks really far away, doesn't it? <laughs> I think we've managed to create uh, the sense of scale that we see in Phoenix as well in Ilos. However, guys, that does feel like a good point for a detailing time lapse. We have a bunch of work to do, uh, including bringing in lots of surface painter into the areas that we want them. Uh, lots of natural desert detailing, cactus and overgrowth in and around the outskirts of the complex. And basically boxing the entire thing with a big batch of chain link fencing. And don't forget everyone to vote for the governor. Bring in some more warehouses over here as well just to fill out some of these spaces. And also amend the curvature in the train line in order to please the train people. And then just generally bring in industrial props, containers, little sort of sheds. And all these little bits of industrial detail that we've come to know and love over the course of City Skylines now. And just help it settle in uh, to this area a little bit more than it currently does. Otherwise... Let's polish a turd, and then we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, so before we do a detailing review, uh, we actually have an Isles flag now, courtesy of the wonderful uh, AQZ. So thank you so much for these, dude. Uh, we'll definitely start placing these around the city. Uh, I've dropped a couple outside of the governor's office from last episode. And I hope you can see it's a reference to the Arizona flag, but of course we've got the little Ilos cactus in there. So really nice work, dude. Thank you so much for those. I will leave them down on the workshop below. If anyone wants to go and grab them, uh, and we'll certainly place a few of these around the city during our streams. But either way, let's have a detailing review. So we brought chain link fencing around the entire complex, along with our Ilos dry belt, cactus, and sort of dry grasses. Uh, detailed up our car parks with some repeated tree patterns. Uh, brought in some of the uh, finagled office spaces that we did last episode, just so there's some kind of on-site admin and HR for this facility. Uh, brought in some public awareness as the uh, kind of garbage truck drivers will be going all over the city. There is Beware of Aliens, and there is actually an alien coven uh, underneath this sign, so sketchy behaviour from the aliens by the looks of it. Brought in some rocks, and yet again, some more industrial fencing with our overgrowth pallets. Uh, some uh, trailer props as well. Alongside some more office zoning, uh, more containers and some finagled uh, vanilla industrial assets to help serve as part of the water treatment facility process here. Uh, again, there's little bits of bushes and power lines between the trains. Also made a very tiny train yard. Again, looking around Google Earth uh, in Phoenix, there are some very small train yards that just branch off of the main line. So a little bit of industrial detail in here next to the factory. Uh, on the intersection, again, I actually headed over to uh, Tucson in in Arizona and had a look at a big five-way intersection. So I've split the road into two roads, and then we can see what we've done here with node controller. Um, it's all in the same node, all just stretched out and shifted around, so it's all flowing and looks sensible. And indeed, took inspiration from the intersection markings in Tucson. Just very simple dash lines on and off. There's nothing kind of overly complicated happening here. So, I'm really happy with this. More sort of container action alongside the train station. And indeed, I'm really happy with how the train line has been framed as it runs through this whole area now. It's uh, it's come together really nicely. Also dropped in a little uh, vanilla industry prop here. Just so it kind of it works nicely, I think, with the little basins. So, I'm happy for that to be included. And then also a little bit of sort of admin for the water towers. Bits of storage and containers and whatnot. Things that might be used to... Keep them in working order and also file away some papers that might be in here as well. And should we just ever slightly tease the twilight hours? I think we will, right? There we go. <laughs> just as the lights are about to come on. Very nice. And I've also brought in a node-controlled industrial road just to sit outside of the main entrance so it's like a delivery point. You know, they can do big turns here. And do all their little admin and sort of industrial-focused vibes. However, guys, that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, likes, comments, and shares below really do help my channel grow. I'd like to help support the work through our links down to Instant Gaming, Merchandise, and Patreon below. And equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then leave me a dislike as well. Really happy with this, and an enormous shout to Avania's modular assets. They make an enormous difference to how much more detailed we can make these service collection areas, you know. These things are pretty big in real life. And thanks to the Steam Workshop, we can now make them pretty big in city skylines as well. We have massively satisfied Ilos's demand for garbage processing, sewage treatment, and water production uh, in this build today. Uh, we won't need any of these services for a very long time. But I'm really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do hang around for the cinematics and check out the enormous sprawl now that's presented with the mile grid up to the downtown. The view is just really nice. <laughs> Super happy with it. Either way, I will shut up and I will leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.